Greetings. Welcome to the Old Ways Rising Farm YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be about using everything. The old saying in butchering a pig is that the, the homesteader uses everything except the oink. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to work on using everything except the oink by dressing some leather, or at least starting the process of dressing some leather. What we're going to do, I have some deer skins. I got these from a local butcher shop. Go and when you're setting up a homestead, make sure you start making relationships with the people around you. Find out what your resources are. Talk to people. Find these things. But what we're going to do and the process that I'm going to show you for the first couple steps will work for any small hide. You wouldn't want to do your first run on some big giant cow hide. This would work on a calf hide. This will work for sheep. This will work for goat. This will work for deer. Hi, kitty. Please don't be in the way too much. This will work for many different uh, small hides, really any small hide. So these are often thrown out. A lot of hunters throw away deer hides, don't want to do anything with them, don't want to be bothered. Uh, most butcher shops will keep them and sell them. But a lot of people, your neighbors, your hunting neighbors, are very likely throwing away their deer hides. Goat skins are often thrown away. Most people will take sheep skins and, and tan, ha, send them out to be tanned fur on, but not all the time, and not all of them are, are valuable if you have somebody who's butchering hair sheep. So look around your area if you just want to try this, and if you're butchering animals, think about this, okay? Don't, uh, but a any small hide will, will do well. Pigs are very different mm -hmm. than what we're going to talk about here. And cows, why are you eating grossness, little kitty? Cows, <laughs> we're going to be interrupted many times. I can see it happening during this, during this film. Um, cows are just big and present some different challenges because of their size and the thickness of the hide. Okay? But what I'm going to do with you here today is we're going to flesh this entire hide. And I'm going to talk about the first step in preparing the skin after fleshing, which is called bucking. We'll get to that about halfway through the video. We'll get to the bucking. So stay tuned for that. That's how we remove the hair. This is going to be prepared for hair off dressing or tanning. Okay. This will work for rawhide. If you just want to make some rawhide to have around for, for doing this, that, or the other thing, it's very useful material. <laughs> This will work as the first step for brain tanning or buckskin making. This will work for the first step for an alum tan or a bark tan. Okay, it's all the same first couple steps, whatever you want to do with your skin. The absolute simplest way to take a skin and turn it into something useful is to simply prepare it as rawhide, dry it, dry it and stick it in a corner. You can always come back and tan it later or you can use it as, raw, as rawhide. But please don't throw away your skins. Now, when you're looking at a ruminant hide, and I just started scraping a little bit here, this white patch, this is the, the back of the leather. This is the, called the flesh side of the leather, and the side that has the fur on it is called the grain side. Okay? Now, when you skin an animal, you want to stay well away from the flesh side of the leather. If you score this, you're going to see, we're going to be pretty rough on this with our fleshing knife. If you score through this, it will rip by the time you're done processing the hide. So scratching the hide is the same as cutting right through it. A lot of people will say that they think that they're great skinners, but when you look at it, you've got score marks all the way across, and it's ribbons. Even if it holds together when they hand it to you, it's going to turn into ribbons by the time you're done. So you need a nice, clean hide. Inside, this, this red gunky looking layer here. This is called the twitch muscle. And this is the muscle which attaches to the back of the skin on ruminants and lets them twitch their skin and, and twitch their hairs to kick flies around. So if you ever see a horse or a cow in a pasture and flies start to land on it, their whole, their, their whole skin twitches to kick off the, the, the fly. That's what this is. When you're skinning, leave the twitch muscle on the hide. It's very difficult to cut this off with a knife without scoring the leather. Okay, you want to use a blunt tool to do that. You want to come do that as a later step. So we have our hide. This one had been in a pile salted. 
Salting is not necessary. In fact, I, I would prefer it wasn't salted. Okay. But we now need to get this, the majority of the gunk off of it. There's some chunks of meat and fat that are stuck here. Those all need to be gone, and the twitch muscle needs to be completely gone. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be completely, totally perfect in this first pass, because after the bucking process, it's going to get another pass, and the last little bits of membrane will be easier to remove then. Okay. Now, you're going to have to get personal with your skin here. So wear garbage clothes, don't do your hair up nice, and anticipate getting dirty on fleshing day. Okay, it's just a messy process. You want a fleshing knife, and the fleshing knife needs to be blunt. I can take my fingers and run them back and forth here without any fear of cutting myself. Okay? This is butter knife blunt. It's a scraping tool, not a cutting tool. This is why pigs are different. You need a sharp edge to do pigs. You need a sharp edge to do beaver, Okay, because they have really thick layers of, of um padding and fat that are very firmly attached to the skin and actually have to be shaved, mm -hmm. but this is blunt. You can take a um, draw knife that's made for woodworking, take some sandpaper or a stone and take the edge off, very deliberately take the edge off until it's safe to do this, and then you can use that as a fleshing knife. Uh, these aren't expensive to buy, right? Just Go to an internet auction, go to any uh, outdoor supply company, and you can get one of these. Now, to get in and start doing, just as I did here, just pick a spot somewhere, kind of just drape your hide so it's in the middle. I like to start right on the back and just start scratching through until you see the skin start to come out. Okay? Now, once you do that, come down in a ribbon. Okay? And start getting a clear spot where you've removed all of that. This will often bind up. If you have a spot here and then you try to flesh into it, a little bit of knife work, sometimes necessary. Okay. Now I have a spot. Now I'm going to start here where that roll is. I'm going to work down again. Beam is sliding. I had a block underneath it and that slipped out. Renee, could you grab that block and push it right back in? Yep. The bottom. This holds still a little bit more. Then I'm going to pull it up again. Do the same. Do the same thing. That should hold. Thank you, hon. Okay. So there's a whole stripe. Now, whenever you hit something that you're not going to include as part of your leather, cut it off. Okay? This tail is not going to be part of our leather. It will be part of a fishing fly. So this is not garbage, but we're not going to have that as part of this finished dress hide. So cut it off. Mm -hmm. now I'm going to flip this and come back here, do exactly the same thing. all the way to the other end. Still working down the middle of the back. Just getting one clear path. Isn't it always so that as soon as you get your hands filthy, your nose itches? <laughs> indeed, okay. indeed. Now that's into the neck. The neck is really thick leather. And whoever skinned this pretty much got all of that off. So we're going to just kind of go on this whole surface since this is already pretty clean. There's a little fat glob there we want to get rid of. Every once in a while, clean the gunk off your knife. Again, 
These little things that really stick on, especially if they're fatty, the bucking process will get rid of. But we have to expose the whole back of the skin so that the chemicals can work. Okay. Sometimes at the ends this will kind of hang up there a little bit. You just take your knife and trim it. This is a workout. ever do get into doing bigger animals, you can get fleshing knives that have two edges so that you can have one sharp for shaving that pig hide and the other blunt for doing this. I don't have one of those. in that membrane in the, the next time we do this. Okay, so now we have a track all the way down that's clear. Now this will give us a nice place to start and get everything off of the size of the animal here. So we're going to start right where it's already done. Use that nice starting point worked out. The fleshing beam does not have to be fancy. This is just a chunk of locust I got in a pile of logs for fence posts. I just split it in half with wedges. I'm leaning it against a stock trough that's full of holes and no longer useful for the stock trough. Okay. Up a bit. One very good thing, nice thing about this is that every pass gets a little easier than the previous because you're taking a lot of weight off this. Okay. And now there's no resistance here, so this won't fight me at all just come. Just work it down toward the other side. Even if you don't see anything, still scrape. Scrape the entire surface. Now you see this membrane that's attaching the twitch muscle to the skin? A lot of this is still attached to the skin. It won't come off in this pass. Don't worry about it. It'll come off in the next pass. Here we're just getting the gloves. Okay, here we have a bullet hole. Do not take the knife bare down and go all the way across the bullet hole. Go up to it and then give it some space and work down that way. This area is pretty clean, but if you leave a gap here, flip it 90 degrees and come at that from this direction if you need to. Don't scrape over the bullet hole. You will rip it and you'll get a big old tear in your hide. Okay. Now, talk a little bit about what's going to happen in the next step while I do this repetitive stuff. That's what's called bucking, which is the hair removal process. You can, I've never done it, but it is in the historical records, you can 
take a hide. After you do this process, and chuck it in cold water and let it soak for a while, a week or so. I don't exact. Again, I haven't done it. I can't tell you exact times from experience. And the bacterial action will loosen the hair from the grain side. It's risky. It's very easy to ruin a hide that way because there's no preservatives, so it can just rot right through. We want to loosen the hair. We don't want to rot our hide to oblivion. You can see, even though we're still early in the process, there's a lot of work in this. Okay. The second way to buck the hide is to use a base of some sort. In the olden days, the base was wood ashes. Generates lye in solution. Very strong base. And that will degrade the grain layer, the epidermis, because it degrades keratin. Keratin is what's in your fingernails, makes up cow horn, and thickens a callus. When you get a callus on your fingers from work, the reason that patch is hardened more than the surrounding skin is because it's got more keratin in it. So the epidermis builds up keratin. The other layers don't. The base degrades that keratin, but preserves the collagen and elastin in the dermis, this underneath layer. So it's a preservative for this, this back layer and degrades the epidermis. That allows the hair to slip without risking rotting out our whole hide. Okay? That's to our advantage, that's why we do that. Now, if you use wood ashes or lye out of a out of a bottle, like if, like as though you were making soap, you have to be very careful how much you use. Because too much will degrade everything. Okay? Then you have again you're back to no hide. What we're gonna use hydrated lime, calcium hydroxide which does produce hydroxide. It is a very caustic base. All hydroxide is a caustic base. But it's not very soluble in water. So you can't dissolve enough to damage the layers of the skin that we want to save. Okay? So if you're going to completely remove that grain layer, i.e. making some sort of suede or buckskin your desired end product you really can't overbuck if you use the line because it will preserve what you care about and degrade what you're going to get rid of anyway if you want to do something like a bark tan and keep the grain layer on for that shiny surface, then you really have to watch it and make sure that you don't let the process go too long. Because it will take that completely off. And if you get a hide that's been tanned grain on, but it's been overbucked, it's real easy to tell because it'll look like there's blisters across the surface. It's not a big deal. It doesn't weaken the hide any. It's just a cosmetic thing. But if you're wanting to do carving on it, have a nice surface for some sort of decorative work, then you've got to watch that. How long it takes to do the bucking is directly determined by the temperature. You 
could do this in the summer, which I don't do because of when hunting season is. So these deer hides aren't available in the middle of summer. And you're doing a thin hide like this, it can go very quickly. Week, two weeks. If you're doing this cold root cellar or refrigerator temperatures, the bucking is going to take a time period measured in months. So we'll post this video as soon as it's ready, but the follow-up will be a little while coming. Okay. You tell when the bucking is done by grabbing a handful of hair and seeing if it pulls out. If you want to keep the grain layer for a bark tan or something like that, you want to stop the bucking process as soon as the hair is easy to pull out with a little bit of pressure. If you want to take it out, if you want to take the whole grain off, you want that whole layer loosened, then you let the bucking proceed until you can just take the flat of your hand, pet the surface, and the hair just comes off just from being petted. Then it's ready. So it's a tactile thing. There's not a recipe for that. Every hide's a little different. It varies with thickness of hide. Thinner hides go faster than thicker hides. A true root cellar will go a little faster than like a breezeway door that freezes part of the time in the winter. And if you're in Florida and it's warm all year, you're back to this just taking a couple of weeks. Okay, this is not a processable chunk down here on this leg section, so again, I'm just going to cut that off. There's enough work in this, we don't need to waste time on things that are not, that have no future. Okay. There. Now, if I hold this up, and see that one side is completely done and we've made some substantial inroads into the second side. We get the last bit of this doesn't take super long to do this first pass. It's some work mind you but it's not not ruin your day kind of work. Will ruin your clothes, especially if you get a greasy one. Now the second advantage to doing bucking is that those hydroxide ions will also turn fat into soap. So it's going to help us degrease the hide at the same time we're loosening the skin. That's why I say if there's a little clump of something, a little bit of membrane like that that doesn't come up, the bucking process will loosen it. So two months from now, which is probably what this is going to take in our cellar, that'll just come right off because it will have been loosened by the chemistry. Okay. And is rolling more than pulling off in strips. So I keep having to adjust it here. That's okay. It's the same number of strokes either way. This little bit's being stubborn. There, you, you can really see that that's a layer of muscle that I'm scraping off. Mm -hmm. In addition to the fat, 
this dermis layer, it's collagen and elastin, which are basically gelatin, hide glue. You boil it, the gelatin breaks apart and dissolves. That's how you make hide glue. It's called hide glue, because you make it from a hide. Imagine that. Hmm. Crazy talk. Okay. And those fibers are what we really want in our finished leather. What holds them together and makes them rubbery are natural glues called glycoproteins. There we go. Just rip that off in a sheet. We've got it pretty well started. Finish this chunk and then I'll go and finish the rest of that. So those glues are also weakened and partially degraded by the base in our bucking solution. So we'll get, we'll cut the fats and we'll get rid of a lot of that natural adhesive tendency. And then, oop, there, I got in a little too hard and I made a tear. It's here at the side, so it's not a real big deal. But, that's what we don't want to do. Hide is tough. Hide can take some abuse. But not infinite abuse. possible to prepare a hide without bucking. This is real thin. Get back to that thought in a second. This is real thin and it's got another one of these chestnuts in it, so it's a scent gland. For their urine posts. Scrapes. how they tell each other who's interested in affection and who is not. I'll say it delicately since I, there may be families watching this channel. Leaving that in there won't do your sheet of leather any good. So the way this was done without bucking, some people still do it. All of these are worldwide processes, by the way. This is not, none of what I'm doing is intrinsic to one culture or another. It's best recorded from Native American culture, but it's a worldwide skill. It's about good, but the dry scrape process doesn't involve bucking. You would take this as it is now, string it up on a stretching frame, let it dry to rawhide, and then take a sharp tool to the hair side and shave the surface off. can also be done on a frozen hide. I'm going to do this wet scrape, which is bucking. So both again, worldwide skills. Dry skate tends to be fairly prominent anthropologically. 
where you have desert areas where it's hard to keep things damp long enough for the bucking to proceed, and the high arctic where things freeze, and then you would scrape the frozen high just as you would a dried one. So a lot of, some of that has to do with environment as much as what works. Okay, so we have a nice fully fleshed hide. Okay, you're about to be regretting your life choices if you hang out there too long. Okay, now you can see if you direct the camera down here, hun. We'll get ready for the next for the next thing. I want to spread this out. This is a very nice hide. Okay. Get to see my unkempt hair. I do did not uh, put any effort into looking spectacular when I'm going to do this slimy mess. Obvious reasons being obvious. And here's some line. Is that in the frame? Yep. Okay. How I like to do this, let me grab a bucket of water. Can you grab that? Come around and pour a little in here, so I don't want to, that's a nice clean bucket. So pour enough in there. Okay, stop there. I like to do this as a paste. This is not toxic. You don't have to worry about getting a little bit on your lawn. You don't have to worry if you get a little bit on your hands. However, it is extremely caustic. Remember I said about keratin in um, calluses. You also have a lot in scabs. Mm. So if you have a scab or a cut on your hands, this will completely remove the scab almost immediately. And then it'll start bleeding again and burn like fire. Don't ask me how I know. So again, gloves, okay? Now this is a gloppy paste. We want a pourable paste. So could you pour about half of what's left in there? Okay, a little more. Please don't flash it on me. There we go. Thank you, beloved. went a little overkill in the other direction now. <laughs> um, if you go into the shop, there's a bag of lime right there, yeah. and there's a black uh, mushroom tray in the bag of lime. Could you fill that out and bring one more out for me, please? Absolutely. Thank you so much. Okay. So this, what I'm going to do here works very well for thin hides. And it's nice and easy to manage because we're not going to have buckets and buckets of wet solutions. I'm going to apply this lime as a paste to the back of this hide rather than making enough liquid. Did you find it? Okay, thank you. Rather than making enough liquid solution in order to fully submerge this hide, I'm going to make enough paste. Thank you so much. to just dampen the back, okay? Keep it nice and moist. And this lime will soak in from the back side, penetrate all the way through, and start to do its job, preserving the back and degrading the hair follicles. Okay. I like to do it this way just for simple. Okay. Again, not toxic. If you get a little on the grass, it's not a big deal. The salt that came off is much more worrisome than this. But this does not leave me with buckets and buckets and buckets of what do I do with it? Waste material. We should make enough to do what we need to do. 
and we're done. It will sit right where it is. And when I do the second fleshing, at the end of this whole thing, it'll just be scraped off. And the grass will be grateful for the addition of the calcium. So we're not doing anything toxic. We're not doing anything nasty. A little bit unappealing, but not nasty. And we're not going to have any worrisome waste material at the end. The few little bits of salty scraps that I scraped off that the cats are licking to death over there. Hopefully they don't lick the lime. They'll have a real bad taste in their mouth. But they'll be picked up by the neighbor dogs if the raccoons and the possums leave them alone long enough. Ugh. Won't hurt any of the wildlife to eat the scraps. Won't hurt the grass to have the little bit of lime in the bottom. Okay. So that first fleshing is all about getting to the hide so that this can sit on it and penetrate. And then this mixture will loosen everything up so that the rest of it goes smoothly and simply. Okay. But it has to be has to stay moist in order to do it. Make sure I get this all the way out to the edges. You will lose some of the, every time every process you'll see a few more junky spots that you cut off. So if you miss a little bit of the edge, it's not the end of the world. You'll still have the bulk of it come out very nice. Now we're going to fold it in on itself. Flesh side to flesh side. At least as much as possible. There, I can fold it half that way. And then roll it up. Okay. Again, the pro to doing it this way is ease of handling. The con that it does take a little bit longer. For this to penetrate through the whole hide. But we're talking a couple more weeks in a process that will take a month. These I did earlier today. And now this goes in the box. And the box will go in the cellar for a while. Okay? So that is the first flashing and the bucking. I'm going to finish up liming the back of these hides and get them on in the cellar. If you're watching this, as soon as it's uploaded, it will be a little while till the rest of the process is uploaded because I'll need to check these and care for them and make sure they don't dry out. If they dry out, you unroll it and you put more lime solution on the back. And then it will resume its process. So not the end of the world if it does. These won't get buggy because that lime is so caustic, nothing's going to be happy in there and they won't rot. But if you want shiny surface leather, you do need to be careful about how long you let it go or you'll lose the whole grain layer. So we will let that go for there. Um, if you want to see the rest of this series or the rest of our making things and growing things videos here on, the, on our homestead, please don't forget to ring the notification bell so that you see when new things post because you can't always count on the algorithm to give you what you want. So. Have a wonderful day all, and I will see you in the next video.